this episode of the Design Tours, we travel to the German city of Freiburg to explore its cultural and artistic ties to the Black Forest and its famous Christmas market. Together, we'll discover the unique charms of this city off the beaten path of Germany's main tourist destinations. But first, a little geography lesson. Freiburg belongs to the state of Baden-Württemberg, and it was founded in 1120 at the foothills of the Black Forest. It's the southernmost major city in Germany, with a youthful energy populated by 33,000 students who attend the university. Freiburg gets its unique character from sharing its borders with France and Switzerland. I chose to stay in style at Park Hotel Post for its great location and authentic ambiance. Karen LeBlanc, I'm checking in. Hello, Ms. Blanc. Welcome Hi. to the hotel. Thank you. You had a good trip? I did. The hotel has a literary theme that celebrates the many authors who've stayed there over the years. And so each room has uh, a theme with an author, information about the yes. author in their book. Yes, uh, there's books inside and you can read. And we said, oh, only books. Some people don't like books. It's Who doesn't yeah. like a good book? Are you kidding? <laughs> so we said we want to show the people um, some of our region because our region is very beautiful. Mm -hmm. And so each uh, floor has its own region. The third floor is Freiburg. Okay. The second floor is Kaiserstuhl and Mark. Land, that's the wine region, mm -hmm. and the first floor is the Black Forest. In every corner of this hotel, there are great authors and books, and I love the way the hotel connected me to Freiburg. I really got a sense of the history and the heritage and the culture. And for book lovers, I gotta say, this is the perfect place to stay. I'm standing here in the lobby in front of this bookcase full of books signed by the author. These are authors who stayed here at the hotel. And you can come and pick a book of your choice. Here it is signed, and you can read the book during your stay. The hotel's decor captures Freiburg's character and instantly connects me with the city as I head out to learn more with my guide, Francisca Haller, a Freiburg native with an impressive command of the city's history. Francisca? Hi, Karen. Hi. Francisca, nice meeting Thank you. you. Welcome to Freiburg. Thank you. It's beautiful. Should we go for a walk? Yes. So sure. where are we going to go first? Oh, well, let's go into the city centre first. Okay. Oh, you can see the cathedral. Along the way, I ask about Freiburg's history. In 2020, the city celebrates its 900th anniversary since its founding in 1120 as a free market town in the Upper Rhine Valley. And what is important to know about the, Black, uh, about the Upper Rhine Valley as well is that three nations meet here in a very narrow stretch of land. The Germans on this side. Okay. The French just half an hour's drive from here on the other side. Right. And an hour's drive to the southern direction with have Switzerland. Throughout its history, Freiburg switched back and forth between Austrian and French rulers. Air raids during World War II destroyed much of the old town. We started the World War, so we earned everything that happened uh, in, in, the, uh, in the years after the war or during the war. Freiburg got destroyed during an air raid quite late. The uh, air raid was flown in, on the 27th of November of 1944. It took about 20 minutes just to destroy the town for more than 80% in the old town center. Today, the rebuilt city is populated with colorful stone buildings and houses. Francisca tells me the Freiburgians are known as stone rich. Those are wine pebbles, Karen. Wine pebbles are flat and round stones. We get them out of the Rhine, as uh -huh. the name says. We cut them in half with a hammer and then you've got a form like a half moon. We put that into sand. It's all handiwork. You can see that all those stones come in many, many different colors. Sorry. And um, we can create beautiful ornaments. Oh, that. is that a pretzel? That's a pretzel, <laughs> excuse me. That's a pretzel. Shop owners pay for the pebble medallions at their storefronts as a form of advertisement dating back hundreds of years. This is fun, it's like a game. Let's see what it else is. we can find. <laughs> 
There's one available for sale. <laughs>Along the way, I notice little canals running through the main streets. They are called Beishlas and they are a source of civic pride. Beishla is the local diminutive to all German word Bach and that means rivers. So it's little rivers running through the whole town. Yes. We invented a water transport system and this water comes from our local river, the so-called Dreisen. Okay. It goes into the town, runs through every street and then back into the river at the end of the system. It is a week before Christmas and Freiburg's main shopping district is filled with people. So we do a little window shopping in search of holiday finds. By the way, Freiburg is a shopping town. Oh. Because here in the Upper Rhine Valley, we are the second biggest town after Strasbourg. Okay. Strasbourg is an hour's drive further up north. We arrive at the Freiburg Cathedral, a Gothic architectural masterpiece decorated with pillars, figures, balustrades, and finials all carved into red sandstone. The cathedral took 300 years to build, starting in the year 1200 up until 1513. All those statues here were showing you the most important ideas of Christian beliefs. Oh, nice. So when entering, you've got kind of... Um, let's say, a visual shortcut right. to the main ideas. Right. This is sort of like a primer for, for Absolute, mass. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> All those uh, statues were made at the end of the 13th century, mm -hmm. and they are not wood carvings, but they are stonemason's works. Wow, they look like wood carvings. Absolutely. There's a matte Mm -hmm. almost a matte finish or look to them. That's absolutely. Just, the wooden texture. That is wooden. amazing. Inside the cathedral, massive stained glass windows continue the visual narration of Christian stories and beliefs for those who couldn't understand the Latin Mass. We've got more than 500 different stained glass windows here in Freiburg, and with that amount, we are actually leading in the German-speaking world. The stained glass windows were funded by guilds of craftsmen in the Middle Ages with designs that doubled as advertising billboards. The tailors, the bakers, the blacksmiths, they all commissioned stained glass windows depicting religious scenes with a little self-promotion. The ones who had money mm -hmm. and power and who wanted to show that as well here in the societies of the cities were actually the guilds of craftsmen mm -hmm. next to the university of course as well and the local rulers. The guilds of craftsmen decided to donate the money for our stained glass windows. And you can actually tell which guild donated which kind of window oh. because they all put their coats of arms oh into the lower parts of the windows. During the Second World War, the citizens of Freiburg were able to save the stained glass windows from destruction. Fortunately, here in Freiburg, we decided to take the old stained glass windows out of the window openings already in 1939. Oh. So we took them out. Oh my God. We packed them in boxes. We stored them in the lower parts of the eastern towers, which are quite strong parts to right. the building. And then we prayed it out. Around the cathedral, there was hardly any building left after that air raid that had survived. But the cathedral just suffered one little bomb down there, up there, which didn't explode. So it just ruined a few tiles. Wow. And after the Second World War, we could unpack our boxes and put the windows back into wow. the house. The cathedral was the heart of the city where commerce and social life converged around the market. You can still see the bread shapes used as measurements in medieval times carved into its sandstone walls. If you uh, went to the market and bought a loaf of bread and you had the impression that actually the baker had cheated on you, okay, you could come here and control the size of the bread. So you could check the Absolutely. size of the bread Absolutely. so you weren't ripped off by the Absolutely. town baker. Absolutely. The Black Forest foothills reach down into the city and influence its culture, food, and folklore. One of two town gates, the Swabian Gate, leads to the Black Forest and Freiburg's Swabian neighbors. So we head to Freiburg's annual Christmas market in search of design finds and regional crafts from the Black Forest. So what is the history of the, the Christmas market here in the city? Well, um, the Christmas market started first in 1973, so quite a long time ago. 
and they started with 20 stalls. Today they have 129 different stalls oh spread here in this part of the town. The Freiburg Christmas Market is the place to find artisanal products and handicrafts from the Black Forest, including blown glass ornaments, felt items, and woodworks. The tradition of carving uh, masterpieces is something that is very important to the Black Forest. So there's a lot of woodworkers, mm -hmm, absolutely. Uh, craftsmen mm -hmm. that work with wood from the Black Forest. Uh, those are the typical traditional shoes, you get them in the Black Forest. So they are traditionally made in the Black Forest. They are all handiwork and um, all the, um, the materials are actually natural materials. Um, normally, traditionally, they were made out of straw. Right. Today they use seasonal because they can't get the long straw anymore that easily. But still, it's all handiwork, all natural uh, materials. And the interesting thing is that they are called witches' shoes as well. Witches? Yes, shoes? like the witch. Oh my goodness. Um, mm -hmm. They look so friendly. <laughs> yeah, they do. They do. <laughs> and the beeswax is original from the Black Forest, so from here. Can I touch one? Darfst du die anfassen? Ja? So Smell. this is... <laughs> mm, mm -hmm. The aroma. Mm, this is so nice. We take a shopping break to sample Strieble, a Christmas treat that tastes like a funnel cake. And now it looks like tiny, like a nest it does. covered with snow, doesn't it? It does! Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, lovely! Thank you, thank you! Thank you! Thank you! Thank you! You see, it's getting crowded! Yes. As night falls, the Christmas market comes alive with twinkling lights and crowds of locals gathering to socialize and sip spiced German wine, another local specialty. Before we end our shopping trip, Francesca wants to take me to the stone cutter to experience a popular local Christmas tradition. Each holiday season, families go to the stone cutter to pick out a stone in hopes of finding a crystal surprise inside. So, I pick out my stone. And what kind of stone is this? Yeah, you have luck, there's a cave inside. <gasps> oh my wow. gosh, wow. <laughs> wow. It's gorgeous, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that night as I head back to my hotel, a mountain breeze blows into the city, circulating the delicious smells of roasted spiced nuts and fresh baked pastries. The scene is magical. I'm exhausted, yet I feel so alive with the anticipation of tomorrow, another day exploring Freiburg. The next morning, I meet up with another guide, Bernard Mueller. Our plan is to shop the farmer's market around the cathedral and then visit two of Freiburg's notable museums. Well, thanks for introducing me to Ben, the manager of the market. So I thought we'd take a stroll. I wanted to learn more about the marketplace around the, the cathedral. This market combines uh, regional produce, like vegetables, fruit and stuff. Mm -hmm. But we also have, uh, as you can see in the background, we have a uh, handcrafted goods, like made of wood. Um, then we, we have regular traders. This market, if you live in the city, this market is, it's the heart of the city. It's something that, that every, pretty much every Freiburg person can relate to. We start with a breakfast of Freiburg's famous sausage. So this is a Freiburg classic. It's the Freiburger Lange Rote, the long red sausage. Um, that's among the people of Freiburg is an absolute classic. Can I, I was gonna ask how I eat such a long sausage on a small bun, but we fold it over, aha. There you go. Enjoy Lovely, it. thank you. The farmer's market functions as the city's grocery store, where local farmers, producers, bakers, and artisans all come together to sell their produce, foods, and products. So 
So this is a great example of handcrafted uh, goods. There's a lot of craftsmanship in this. So and this is we're very proud to have um, shops like this on our market. Min is talking about the iconic Christmas cookie molds, a popular German holiday tradition, and a product to purchase if you're looking for authentic products to the region. Like one of the many success stories of this market is the cheesecake stand over there. Time for a coffee break with our cheesecake as we chat about what it's like to live in Freiburg. Along the way to lunch, Bernard stops to brag about the Bächles. I told you these little canals were a source of civic pride and apparently sanitary. This actually is water that comes from the Black Forest. This is really clean water. I mean, I can show you. And as you see, I don't drop down. It's absolutely fresh water. He recommends a food court located in the city's old newspaper building. I decide on a German pasta dish. So how, how do we say, how do we say in German, Bon Appetit? Guten Appetit. <laughs> I really enjoyed my German lunch of okay. ravioli stuffed yeah. with meat which has a long legacy. Maultaschen, just try it. Maultaschen. Maultaschen. Very good. Maultaschen. You're perfect. <laughs> I'm working on my German. <laughs> I love the story behind that dish too, that it was invented by monks, right? That couldn't eat meat on Fridays and would hide the meat. The city is bustling with bike riders, a popular mode of transportation in this eco-conscious culture. Freiburgians typically avoid single-use plastics and avoid driving around in cars when possible. Well, next we arrive at Freiburg's Museum of Modern Art. Time for a tour. Well, thanks for meeting me for a tour of the Museum of Modern Art. So I, I'm wondering, how did Freiburg come to have its own Museum of Modern Art? Well, it all started in the middle of the 1980s. So we moved out from Augustina Museum and have the collection of 20th and 21st century here in this beautiful building, which used to be an old girls' school. So it was part of a nun cloister. As I travel throughout Freiburg, it's impossible to ignore the scars of its wartime past. The museum's empty wall space serves as a powerful reminder of the toll World War II took on its art and cultural treasures. So I really dig deep in our archives mm -hmm. and I found out that these paintings were part of our collection mm -hmm. but was, were taken away by the Nazis in 1937. Wow. So here you can see the politics of the Nazis and what it has done to our collection. So basically half of our collection was taken away, confiscated by the Nazis. And we wanted to show uh, the gaps. We wanted to show, uh, we wanted to, you know, display uh, uh, what this period of time had done to the German culture. The paintings that were taken by the Nazis, represented by the blank spots on the wall, is, do you know where they are? Well, they are in a data bank, uh -huh. but uh, until now we haven't found any of the paintings. So it can happen a, a variety of things to them. Either they are into private collection because also the Nazis liked to have some of the paintings, or they are destroyed, or they are sold, it's like different ways. It, it really um, is very moving mm -hmm. to stand here and look at the wall space and see all of the empty spaces where masterpieces and works of art that were precious to the museum yeah. are now gone and lost yeah. to history. The museum's permanent collection consists of celebrated German artists, including Max Ernst, August Macker, and a famous sculpture by Wilhelm Limbrook named Ascending Youth. 
So when you're invited to sit next to a Max Ernst. Oh my, what a privilege uh, to be yeah. so close. And the idea behind this is, as you just do it, to sit like next to a good friend. Mm -hmm. During my visit, the museum is hosting a special exhibit of Hermann Scherer, a prolific and controversial German expressionist artist who died in 1927 at the age of 34. I'm immediately drawn to his unconventional use of glowing, luminescent colors. I mean, his, his paintings have a, you know, almost a fluorescent quality to them that they glow. That's true, and they made a hundred years ago. And, and I think that's his special technique. If you, you know, uh, go a little bit g g closer, you can see what he's done. It's oil painting, but it's not at all closed surface. He, um, he used turpentine mm -hmm. to uh, mix it into the oil, mm -hmm. and this makes it more fluid, and this makes as if the pigments of the color come out of the, uh, out of the painting, come on the surface of the painting. The exhibit features works from the last three years of Scheer's life, from 1923 to 1926, and includes his graphic wood sculptures considered scandalous during his time. So for in the example, States, we would call that R-rated. Yes, it's R-rated. <laughs> for example, like the mother and the child, uh -huh. right? It's right. very radical, um, and it's very real. It's uh, nothing beautified, and at the same time, it's so beautiful. Scheer often painted both sides of his canvases to save money. He was poor and canvases were expensive, so he recycled them. The museum has opened up the backs of several of his paintings to show this. As I look at his paintings, you know, I wonder how his paintings were received during his lifetime because they're radical, they're unconventional. It's true, they were poorly received, um, so he was maybe too radical. Um, he lived in Switzerland, in Basel, and he's also, you know, much more known in Swiss than in Germany. But um, he was really radical at the time he did this. And we don't know, for example, uh, which persons are uh, depicted in the, in the uh, paintings. My discovery of artist Hermann Scherer's works reminds me of why I travel as a design tourist to feed my imagination and soul with beauty and creativity, and to get to know another culture through its artistic heritage. Nobody knew him, uh, and now um, you, you can have a, a look at him and see what he's done and see his colors, and I think that's also a very fulfilling part of my job. Next, we head to the Augustiner Museum of Art and Cultural History. Well, thanks for having me at the Augustiner Museum. Yes. I'm curious, how did this museum come to be? Oh, it's in fact the collection of the citizens. So in the 19th century, everywhere the people looked for artworks, they looked for their history, and they started to collect things. This former monastery was opened as the Augustiner Museum, and the name refers to the monks who lived here. These were monks of the Order of St. Augustine. Okay, so let's go inside and yes. let's hit the highlights. Yes, you're welcome. So. The Augustiner Museum showcases works ranging from the Middle Ages up to the Baroque period and 19th century paintings. We begin our tour in the main hall of towering statues. These sculptures are end of the 13th uh, century. And this is Not? red stone? It's red sandstone, red sandstone. Like, like the whole structure of the cathedral. And they represent the prophets. Gargoyles look at us from above, perched high around the perimeter of the main hall. Gargoyles, ugly and, and, mm -hmm. and demons and so on, they show evil its own face and cause evil to flee from the holy place. Oh. That's the function of the gargoyle on one hand side. The other function is a technical one to spit away the water and to prevent, uh, to prevent damages by, by water. Well, I, I, 
That's very interesting to learn this because I always thought it how ironic that gargoyles were on churches and cathedrals, these ugly devilish yeah, yeah. in a place, a holy place, right? Yeah, I yeah, thought, well, yeah. that's ironic, but of course that makes sense. Restoration and preservation are major parts of the museum's mission. On this day, an expert is repairing cracks in the painting. Here we are in our collection of stained glass. Um, there are four rooms on two floors which exhibit stained glass. And we have one of the most important collections of medieval stained glass in Germany. So starting with glass from the end of the 13th century uh, and a lot of glass from the 16th century. And most of the um, stained glass comes from churches in Freiburg, especially from the cathedral. The ground floor features an archaeological exhibit of excavated objects buried or lost during World War II. So here we start uh, in the near present. So these are um, um, things which um, refer to the, to, the, to the destruction of Freiburg by bombs in, in 1944. They have been found in the in the ruins, and this is uh, the mold of, of, a, of, the, of a cellar floor it? with uh, things the people tried to hide from the bombs in oh the cellar, you know? like, like silver uh, um, um, spoons or, or, or jewelry or uh, a little clock, not a beautiful, uh, beautiful va a vase and so We end our tour with the museum's graphic art collections housed in a modern building with a sculptural stairwell. This is one of our architectural highlights. It's in the new part of the House of the Graphic Collection. We call it the Kleinodien Treppe, the, the stair of the little values of the little precious things. And in these displays we show very precious things. In the moment we have a wonderful collection uh, of old China, with original Chinese porcelain. It's the collection of the Confucius Institute. I end my trip to Freiburg with a bird's eye view of the city from a cable car ride in the old town. I can see sweeping vistas of the Black Forest and the cathedral spire as I reflect on Freiburg's link between culture and creativity, forged by geography, architecture, art, and craft. I hope the places we visit together ignite your imagination and inspire your creativity in life, work, and play. Freiburg is definitely one of my muses. Until the design tourist travels again, stay tuned and stay inspired.